Jonathan, am I audible? Yep, yep. Okay, perfect. So let's start. So, hi everyone. This is Sonali. Thank you all for carving out some time for attending today's webinar on opportunity in crisis. Uh, to all the attendees out there, please type in any questions you might have in the Q and A section, and we'll try to answer as many as possible at the end of the session. I would now like to introduce our speaker. He is the founder of Owner Circle, a venture builder which he started three years ago with visionary entrepreneurs and the mission to help SME business owners and business leaders to achieve massive tra uh, transformational growth through proven strategies and tools. On the second day of lockdown in Malaysia, he was forced to create a training program that helped close to 300 business owners in the Owner Circle community to strategize to stay relevant during the crisis despite the challenges of the marketplace. And today, many of them have managed to pivot, profit, and emerge as thought leaders of their industries, while the rest of the competitors are fearful. Within the course of one and a half months, he has been invited by international trainers and speakers to share with their audiences of business owners and entrepreneurs, ranging from Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand, Indonesia, India, Cambodia, and Ch Japan. He believes that in times of crisis, the slower you move, the faster you die. And one wrong move, and that's the fastest way to die. He believes that in challenging times, entrepreneurs do not need concepts and ideologies, but practical strategies and tactics to realistically make money. With that being said, I would like to hand it over to you, Jonathan. All right, thank you so much, Sonali. First of all, thanks everyone for being with us on a Saturday afternoon. It's such a pleasure to see every one of you. Um, how many of you are here because you want to take advantage of opportunity during this crisis? If you want to do that, type on the chat me. Type on the chat me or you can raise your hand. Okay, let's make this as interactive as possible. Okay, very good. Now, what I'm going to do is this. Okay, hi Praveen, hi, hi everyone. What I'm going to do is, uh, I want to thank all of you for being with us on a Saturday afternoon. Because as a business owner, I know that your biggest asset is your time. And the fact that you have chose to invest your Saturday afternoon with us, I will do, uh, I'll promise you that I'll do everything within my power to make sure that you get your money's worth, you get your time worth. Alright? Okay? So what I'm going to do is, today I'm going to share with you guys 
this topic called opportunity in crisis. And what I'm going to do is I'll share with you some of my thoughts, some of my strategies. I'll share with you guys how I've helped some entrepreneurs in Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand, and also Japan, and how I can possibly share with you some of these strategies that can possibly help you in your business as well. I know that right now the time is in India is not easy. It's not easy for anyone to be an entrepreneur right now, especially right, right as I'm speaking to you. I, I know that the, there's a lot of extension going on. There's a lot of uncertainty going on. In fact, let's be honest. How many of you think that how many of you think that the lockdown will extend beyond June? I'm gonna run a poll here. I'd like to hear from you guys. How many of you think that the lockdown will extend beyond June? Okay, I wanna vote. Let's vote. If you think that the extend the lockdown will extend beyond June, type there yes. Okay, so we have around 50 people in the room. And right now, let's see how many, how, how's the vote. Around 50 people in the room, and most of you have voted. Okay, come, let's end the poll and let's look at the answer. Okay, surprisingly, we have around close to 60%, which is around 58% of you said that, yes, you think the lockdown will extend. Now, the other 43% says that, no, you don't think the lockdown will extend. My next question is this, do you think that business will be as usual? Even if they do not extend the lockdown, do you think business will be as usual? Type on the chat, share me your thoughts. Okay, yes or no? Do you think business will be as usual? No way, no way business will be as usual. So the fact is this, if lockdown extend, extend, most businesses will fail, most businesses will die. And even if the lockdown is not extended, there's no business as usual. So what's gonna happen right now is this, a lot of business owners are going through crisis, not only yourself, I'm talking about startups, small businesses, medium businesses, or even big businesses, not only in India, but also worldwide. And in the Chinese, I, I'm a Chinese, Malaysian Chinese. And in Chinese, we have this word chi, uh, crisis that, sh, that is made up of these two letters. And these two letters is made up of words called danger and opportunity. And for us Chinese, we always believe this. Crisis means danger and it also means opportunity. Okay. However, the fact is this. For most business owners, they are in danger. Um, this is Jack Ma one of the most established entrepreneurs from China who said that for people in business, 2020 is really just a year for staying alive. Don't even talk about your dreams or plans. Just make sure you stay alive. If you can stay alive, then you have made a profit already. Now, how many of you agree with Jack Ma? If you agree with Jack Ma, type that yes. If you don't agree with Jack Ma, type that no. I'd like to hear from you guys. Okay? Yep. And the inconvenient truth is, for most business owners, they are well equipped with skills, with strategies on how to deal with business during good times, but they have very little experience with civil business crisis. In fact, you just think about it, you go on the bookstore, how many books out there that actually talks about business crisis? Tons of books about business growth, but how many books out there actually teaches you how to handle a pandemic like this? So my goal today is this, my goal in the next one and a half hours is I want to help you to be able to first survive. And then we want to talk about opportunities in crisis. If this is why you guys have signed up for, I want you to type there, yes, right? If this is why you're here, type there, yes. So I want to be very practical with you. I'm not going to promise you that there's amazing opportunities first, but I will let you know my job, my goal, you now being brought over to India by Business X is to help as many SMEs to survive, right? Then we will talk about opportunities. Okay, cool. Now, uh, uh, what I'm gonna focus on is this. I wanna focus on how can you sell and market during the coronavirus crisis and realistically make money without you hiring an army of staff, giving up your sleep or increasing your marketing budget. How many of you agree that at this point of time, it is so hard for you to manage your staff? If you agree with that, type that agree. 
Because at this point of time, your staff are probably demoralized, demotivated, right? There's so much pressure, not only in work, but also at home. And you're probably feeling it as well. Not only them, you are feeling the same thing as well. How many of you feel like you're working even harder, but you're generating lesser results? If you're feeling that, type me, M-E, me, okay? Because many entrepreneurs tell me this, John, I don't know why. I am working so hard right now, but my results is getting lesser. I'm, I'm not even sleeping enough. Okay, my goal is to help you to be able to gain back sleep. And number three is many entrepreneurs say in order for me to increase sales, I need to increase my marketing budget. So what I hope to do for you guys today is I want to help you to be able to tie through this, to survive, and then we talk about opportunities. All right? Now, during this lockdown, you probably have attended tons of live webinar trainings already. But one, one thing I'll let you know is this. This is not going to be a typical webinar. Why? Because first, I'm going to make you three promises. The first promise is this. I'm not going to tell you that education and information is your savior. At this point of time, you probably will go around reading a lot of books, attending a lot of webinars. But the fact is, the social media is drawn with so much information. But what you are truly starving for is wisdom. Do you guys agree with that? If you agree with that, type that agree. Okay? If you agree with that, type that agree. And what I want to do for you guys is I will share with you tactics. I will share with you what other people are doing so that you can do it in your business as well. All right? So I will, talk, I'm, I will let you know that my training is not motivational. I focus primarily on tactics and strategies. Okay? If tactics is what you're here for, type there tactics. Okay? Type there tactics. Now, pro my promise number two is this. My promise is, I'm not going to tell you that going online and going digital is the only way out. It's not. What you need is a strategy. I firmly believe that going online, going digital, these are tools for you to reach out to your customers. What you need to do first is you need to understand what is your business strategy. And once you have that, you then able to reach out to your customers using these tools. In fact, I want to let you know that some of my students have hit six figure sales in US dollars in a matter of 10 days without even going online. How many think that's pretty cool? Okay, if you think that's pretty cool, type that cool, C-O-O-L, cool. If you think it's impressive that entrepreneurs can hit six figure sales in a matter of 10 days, okay, then type that cool. And I'm, I will share with you some of these case studies of entrepreneurs who have attended my three days program and then being a part of my coaching program, I'll share with you how they did it so that you guys can do it in India too. And my third promise is this. I'm not going to tell you that I'm a very rich guy. I'm just doing this just to help you and don't need this. And in the end of the program, I will sell you a pro a, another course, right? No, I'm not going to tell you all this. I want you to know that I have been doing business training all this while. And this is my business. I run a platform that helps SME owners. I run masterclass. I run business coachings. And what I'm going to share with you guys today is amazing insights. I'm going to promise you that I'll give you all the contents that I can in the next one hour plus. However, what I love is this. I love that at the last 10 minutes, I will make you an offer and you can explore if you'll be keen to work together with me for me to coach you as well. Does that sound fair to you? All right? Is it fair for me to give you amazing contents, right? 90% of the time. And then at the last 10 minutes, I'll share with you an offer of how we can possibly work together. If you think that it's fair for me to do so, please type there fair, right? Type there fair, okay? I promise you I'll do whatever it takes to give you amazing contents. And, and I'm not sure if you agree with this. As a business owner, very often, all we need is one insight that will change our business forever. Do you guys agree with that? Do you agree that probably in this next one half hours, all you need is that one idea and that will change your business forever. So I hope that you will get that idea through my training today, okay? And if there's an opportunity for me to coach you further, I hope that I'll be able to give you more ideas, more tactics and more strategies, right? Now, since most of you have probably never seen me before. I have never really spoken in India until I had the opportunity to work with Business X. Let me just take some time to share with you who is Jonathan Kwek. Who are you listening to? All right. So I'm going to take around three minutes to give a bit of introduction about myself. All right. So 
a bit of introduction about myself is I started my first business in 2010 and I was very lucky because at the point of time, uh, 2008 was a global recession and what happened was most of the investments were crashing, property price was crashing, stock price was crashing just like what is happening right now. But there was one asset class that was moving up and the asset class was gold and silver. And what happened was I started a website to sell gold and silver. And my company was called silvermalaysia.com. You see these products? These are what I was selling. Look at me. This was me 10 years ago. And I started this business. I grew the business. It's an online trading business. You will go to my website, buy gold and silver online, and I will deliver it to your house. And what happened was I was being featured in numerous media, including Bloomberg and many other countries as well. And I got invited to speak. In the, um, I, I travel around the world doing talks, sharing with people about my thoughts about finance. And one of the guys, you've probably seen him before. Have, how many have seen Robert Kiyosaki before? If you have seen Robert Kiyosaki before, type yes. Okay. I was invited to speak together with him in Malaysia and Thailand. I travel with him. Um, this is Richard Duncan. He's the advisor of IMF and World Bank. And I got invited to travel with these amazing people to share my experience to share my thoughts on how I analyze the financial markets. Now, what happened was this. In 2013, I went to oil. These are my parents. I brought my parents to Canada. We were buying oil fields. So I was raising funds in Malaysia and I was buying oil fields in Canada. And at the point of time, we managed to build the business to a 25 million US dollar annual revenue. And uh, what happened next was this, in 2015, the entire business collapsed. In 2015, five years ago, that was the toughest time of my life. I went through the biggest crisis of my business. And what happened was this. What happened was when the oil price crashed from $110 to $25, the Canadian company that I was working with went bankrupt. At the point of time, I've probably raised around 50 million US dollar in Malaysia. I have a thousand over investors. And I had investors knocking my door, asking for money. And what happened was I couldn't answer them. There's no way I could pay 50 million US dollar. And, and I went on, I went on a search on what really happened. And it took me three years. Three years of hard work to finally realize that my partner in Canada and Singapore were working together to scam us, the investors. And I then later on spent the next two years suing them in the court in Singapore. And you can imagine, this was the magnitude of the problem. Is what this, how many agree that this is a pretty big crisis? If you agree that this is a pretty big crisis, start that crazy. Not if you think that this is a crazy thing to go through, type that crazy. And that was what I was going through. So until today, I'm still having this court case in Singapore. Um, we are still pursuing, we are still fighting in court because I managed to find out that my Singaporean partner and the Canadian partner were working together to scam us Malaysians and they were scamming the Hong Kong investors as well. Now, what I also want to share with you is this. In 2015, when this whole crisis took, took place, I was depressed. I was very depressed. I was taking sleeping pills because I couldn't sleep. There's no way I could sleep handling this kind of crisis. Every single day, the moment you wake up, you have to meet police, you have to meet lawyers, you have to meet investors, and then you have to tell your staff to leave because they don't want to leave. They keep asking me what's next. And it was the worst time of my life. And one day I saw a video of Steve Jobs and that woke me up. Because that video was really about, remember, okay, so I got into this crisis at the age of 30. And then I saw this video where Steve Jobs was facing the biggest crisis of his life at the age of 30 as well. He founded Apple at the age of 21. At the age of 30, he got kicked out of Apple, the company he founded. And then he went into two years of depression. And then what happened next was he woke up and then he said, that is the best thing ever happened in his life because now he can start all over again. And then what happened was he started Next, he started Pixar, and then later on Apple bought him over, and then he managed to become the CEO of Apple again, and he, he brought Apple to become one, one of the biggest company in history of mankind. 
right? So when I first saw that video, I was shocked. And I asked myself, is there a reason why God is giving me this video right now? Is there a message for me? And I posted on my Facebook that day. I was missing from Facebook for seven months. And that day I came back to Facebook. I posted this. I will share this with you. And I started to ask myself this question. I said, so as you can see over here, this is July 2016. Um, I talked about Steve Jobs, the story of Steve Jobs. And what touched me about the video is this. The heaviness of being successful was replaced by the lightness of being a beginner again. Less sure about everything. It freed me to enter one of the most creative periods of my life. And that day, I started to ask myself, what if this crisis is not here to hurt you, but it's here to help you? What if we stop being furious and we start being curious? What if life doesn't happen to you, but life happens for you? And I said, life will never be the same again. Guys, the day I changed the quality of my questions was the day I changed the results of my life. And what happened next was, two years later, I started this business called Owner Circle. We do business coaching. I have a group of entrepreneurs who have achieved certain success coming together to help other entrepreneurs to be successful as well. And during this crisis, I will let you know, I was never meant to do a program like this. The reason why I'm doing what I'm doing right now with you guys is because of them. It's because when the crisis came, they came to me and they asked me, Jonathan, what to do? And I shared this with them. I shared that. This crisis took place in Malaysia in March 2020. I believe it happened almost the same time in India as well. How long will this last? I don't know. I said probably 6 to 18 months. Unless we can find a vaccine, there's no way this can be over. Even if the lockdown is lifted, business will not be as usual because people can no longer be close to each other. Business will no longer be usual. And I shared this with them. At this point of time, I'll share this with you as well. At this point of time, you can choose to be a fear-focused leader, but what's going to happen is you'll be fright. If you focus on fear, you'll be dead. If you're unfocused, you'll fall. Because if you're unfocused, you don't know what you really must do, what's going to happen is this. It's just a matter of time. You have no more motivation, no more cash. You'll be fried as well. So you'll fall. Now, what you want to do right now is this. You want to be what I call a strategy-focused leader. And a strategy-focused leader focus on this. You want to recognize that this is a recession. We are already in one. A recession means that this is a reset button. Why? Because this is the time where big companies will fall. And you, if you are small, if you are medium-sized, you have the opportunity to become the next big boy. And what's going to happen is you will now build, take this time to build your foundation so that after this, you can position yourself to propel and to prosper. So that while others are fright, while others will fall, you will fly. So I shared that with my team members, all my members in Owner Circle in Malaysia, all these entrepreneurs. And I told them, it's not the time to be fear-focused. It's not the time to be unfocused. It's the time to be strategy-focused. And let's use this to become, let's use this window of opportunity to build ourselves to be the next market leaders of our industry. And then we will all fly together. And I, I did an event with them. Um, I, I did this live virtual training, which I will be sharing with you some of the contents here. And my goal is this. My goal is I'll be able to help you guys as well. Right? If you guys are ready to fly, type there, let's fly. Okay? If you guys are ready to fly, type there, let's fly. Okay? Type on the chat, let's fly. Now, I've been running this training. This is my more advanced training program, the Crisis Innovation Strategy 3 Days Masterclass program. Um, I've been running it in Malaysia, not only Malaysia, been running in Thailand as well, Indonesia, Singapore, Cambodia, and right now we are exploring bringing it to India. Now, I'll share with you a very important lesson I've learned while conducting this training. Now, my question right now for you is this, why do some entrepreneurs suffer while some emerge stronger? Okay, share with me your thoughts. Why do some entrepreneurs suffer while some emerge stronger? Is it a matter of size? Is it because if you're a small company, you can survive easier because your expenses are lower? Or is it because if you're a big company, you can survive easier because you have a lot of talents, you have a lot of stuff that can help you to do more things? No. Think about it. If you're a small company, although your expenses are low, what's going to happen is this. Okay? You do not have that much resources. If your company is big, your business is too heavy. 
Think about it. Even Richard Branson is suffering. He has the branding, the personal brand. He has all the resources. But why is it that he is still suffering? Okay, so it's really not a matter of size. Okay, I've learned this. Why is it that when the storm attacks, the big trees will get uprooted? And very often, at the end of the storm, you notice that the simple grass will always survive. Why is it that the big trees are dead while the small grass are still alive? The reason is very simple. The reason is because the big trees, okay, is what I call the ego of your, the ego of the business leader. If the business leader has big ego, what will happen is they are going to be dead by the end of this storm or probably they're dead by now. Okay. What really determines your future is are you able to be simple so that it will make you stable? And are you able to let go of your ego and be humble so that you can get power? So before I actually really start my training, I want to share with you this very important message. Okay. Remember this. You want to be like the small grass. You want to be simple. You want to be humble. And that is the reason why you can be successful. Are you guys learning something so far? If you are learning something so far, type there, love it. Okay, type there, love it. Okay, type there, love it. All right, cool. So now, right now, you guys, everyone, every entrepreneurs are going through a crisis. So think about it. If you are driving a car and you're about to get into an accident, what do you need to do? Okay, type on the chat. If you are driving a car and you're about to get into an accident, what do you need to do? You need to brake, exactly. So my first advice for everyone is this. My first advice is you want to recognize that during this crisis, there's three things you must do. The first thing you must do is you need to learn how to brake. Okay, and this is what I mean preserve. You need to do whatever it takes to preserve your business, to make sure that your business can stay alive. Okay. Now, in order for you to preserve your business, it really depends on your cash reserve. If your cash reserve is low, what do you do? Number one, you want to innovate like crazy. You want to do whatever it takes to bring in the money. Even though it doesn't make any sense to your business, but it brings in cash, do it. Just do it anyway. Bring in the money. Number two, you want to learn to let go. Because you want to recognize that the fact that the rules have changed. Some of my business owners in my community, they renovated their restaurant. They're supposed to open in March. They took a year to plan it. And in March, the lockdown came. My advice to them was let it go. And they couldn't let go. They said, oh my God, I spent one year to build this. And now you're telling me to just close it up? And I said, yes. If it doesn't make sense, you have to eat the humble pie and close it first because it's going to bleed more money if you continue opening. Second thing, if you want to innovate and if your staff cannot innovate with you, I will give you an example. If you have a restaurant and you're doing delivery now because not many people are coming to eat, your waiter, you tell your waiter, go and do delivery. And if your waiter says no, you pay me to be a waiter. I'm not doing delivery. My advice, let go of the waiter. Because your job is to make sure that you do whatever it takes to make sure your business survive. Okay? So whatever doesn't make sense, learn to let go. I know I'm very harsh here, but I'm telling you based on my experience because when my business was in crisis five years ago, I didn't let go. I was doing whatever it takes to hold on to my people because they were loyal to me and I wanted to be loyal to them as well. But that loyalty became my liability. Why? Because at the end of the day, I could no longer pay them. I took, out, to, told them to take a lower pay. I was selling off my assets. And then I was doing whatever it takes that I can do to keep them. But end of the day, business didn't make sense. I had no more assets to sell. I asked them to leave. They hated me because I, they stayed so long. And then what happened was I lost the business. I lost my friends. And I lost whatever cash I had. So my advice for you is learn to let go if you have to. Okay, third one, access to loans. You want to do whatever it takes to be able to access to cash. So go out there and ask what are the loans available for your business. You need cash. Okay, second thing is if let's say your cash reserve is high, what can you do? Number one, you want to market like crazy. 
you want to go out to the market, let them know that you're around because at this point of time, consumption on social media is all time high. So what you want to do is you want to let people know that you are here, you are here for them, you want to give them solutions, you want to advertise like crazy, you want to be in their face. Okay. Number two, you want to learn to acquire because at this point of time, there'll be a lot of businesses that will be in trouble. If the business makes sense, but the business owner has no cash, acquire them. If the talents are good, acquire them. Because that talent that probably will cost you, let's say, 5,000 US dollars to pay him a month, today he's only valued around 2,005. Because the market is just that bad. So you want to go out there and acquire businesses. You want to go out there and acquire talents. Okay? If you have cash, you have the advantage. Third thing, access to loan steel. I know you may say, hey, loans, why, why would I want to take loans right now when I have cash? Because interest rate is low, you still want to access to loans. Okay? Cash is king. Everyone type on the chat, cash is king. Okay? Type on the chat, cash is king. This is what you got to remember right now. Cash is king. So I've created a 12 steps cash flow management checklist. And what I do for my business owners who have attended my training is I have this program where I teach them what are the 12 areas you want to look in your business to make sure that you can manage your cash flow, right? You can manage your cash. So I shared, I'll share this with you um, in my more advanced training program if I have an opportunity to coach you further. And my goal is this, get your cash flow first, then we talk about strategies, okay? So now that I've given you the very brief picture of how this entire crisis work. Now that you know that you got to break first, think about it. If you break already, you manage to avoid the accident, what do you need to do? You need to make sure you turn the right way. Am I right? You need to make sure you pivot, right? So when you move your steering wheel to the next lane, what are you doing is you're pivoting. And in pivoting, I gave this training to you guys before. Now, how many of you have attended this training? Please type on the chat, yes. If you have not attended yet, please type on the chat, no, okay? If you have attended already, type on the chat, yes. And you have not attended, type on the chat, no. Wow, so many, no, surprising. Okay, so for those who have attended the training, yes, uh, I hope that this has been beneficial to you. But for those who have not attended the training, what I will suggest is later on, I will get the team from Business X to send you the recording. Because in this training, I've given them a tool a framework that allows you to know what are the things to look out for to pivot during this crisis. And I gave it three things. Three things you got to focus on. Okay, You got to focus on your message, which is your marketing. You got to focus on your promise. How do you change your product? How do you change your service? And lastly, you got to innovate. You got to pivot your experience. So for those who have not attended my training on this, uh, for those who have attended, can you do me a favor? Can you share with me? Was this training useful? Was this training practical? If it's useful and practical to you, please type on the chat, useful or practical, okay? If you have gained a lot of value from that short 30 minutes training, right? Um, yeah, please type for me, right? So that the rest knows this. So what I want you guys to do is this. I, I don't repeat myself because some of them have attended already. So for you who have not attended the training, please contact the team from Business X to access this training, right? So in fact, Vikash is saying, yes, it was practical and useful. And I tried till now, some parts in phases. Yeah, this is one tool that has helped a lot of my business owners in Malaysia, Thailand, and Singapore, and Japan to be able to pivot to survive during this crisis, okay? And guess what? Together with Business X, we are going to give that training to you guys for free, All right? Okay, so, in that training, you also need this tool. And this tool is what I call uh, the Crisis Innovation Canvas, okay? So make sure you guys download this tool as well when you access this training, okay? Now, why do I give you guys tools? Is because when you put a lot of effort, but you use the wrong tools, you will never get the right results. And at this point of time, what you need is what I call the toolkit for your business. And I want you to know that there's no one single toolkit for your business. There's actually a set of toolkits for your business. When you are able to use the right tools, you have to put in less effort and you will still get the right results. So 
what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to access these amazing tools because in time to come, there's a lot of changes to the market. Just think about it. Lockdown is happening right now in India. The moment the lockdown is lifted, business is not usual. What will happen at the beginning is where people will start to go out again. Okay? When they see someone is going out, they will also go out. And the next thing you will know is when people start going out, what will happen is everyone will start to relax and then they start not to wearing masks, not sanitizing. And what happened is later on, we will have what we call a second wave. And then the lockdown will take place again. So what will happen is, it's going to be a constant change. Okay? Until we find a vaccine, it's going to be a constant change. This is the reason why you need these tools to constantly change and innovate your business. Right now, the key is how do you adapt to recover your business and then to grow your business. Okay? In my more advanced training program, in my coaching program, I give all my students all the tools they need to make sure that they are able to constantly adapt, recover, and grow their business. Right? If you guys want these tools, type there, yes. Okay? If you guys want these tools, type there, yes. Okay? Now, I, I firmly believe in this. You want to take advantage of opportunities. When I give you all these tools in my, my, in my coaching program, you will be able to take advantage of opportunities. But just make sure one thing, please do not take advantage of people. I know right now the market is fearful. Okay? I know the market right now is stressed up. A lot of your customers are feeling that way too. But please, only take advantage of opportunities. Do not take advantage of people. Right? Do you guys agree with that? If you agree with that, type that agree. Okay? Type that uh, agree. Okay? If you agree with this statement, type that agree. Okay. Now, at this point of time, there are some entrepreneurs who also tell me this. John, at this point of time, what to sell? Because people are not buying. People are not buying my product. Okay? Now, let me share with you why people are not buying your product. In order for you to understand it, it's very simple. Do you remember this movie called Titanic? If you have watched this movie before, type there Titanic. If you have watched this movie before, okay, type there Titanic. And Titanic was a real story, right? It's a real story of this ship that they say that you can never sink the ship. Uh, in this movie, of course, they dramatize the movie by having uh, this lady who is a very rich lady and this guy who is from the middle class poor and they fell in love. And what happened was Titanic then hit the iceberg. And what happened then was Titanic sank. And what happened was people were leaving Titanic and people were going on the lifeboat. Now, why am I telling you the story of Titanic is because of this. In good times, people want to be on Titanic. But in bad times, people want to be on lifeboat. So you want to ask yourself, the business that you're in, the product that you're in, you, you're, you're selling, what is the focus? Does it do well in good times or does it do well in bad times? Because like bad times, medical products will all tend to do well, right? Like right now, okay? Good times, if you're a luxury product, you're probably facing challenges. Why? Because in good times, people want what I call an aspirational product, okay? Like a titanic product. In good times, when people are stable, when people are winning, they want an aspirational product. They want a titanic kind of product. But when times are bad, when people are sleeping, people are bleeding, what do people want? They want a practical product. They want a lifeboat. My question is this, are you selling a Titanic or are you selling a lifeboat? Okay. If you're selling a lifeboat, you should be doing well. If you're not doing well, then you have a problem with sales and marketing because in the past, you probably sell face to face, but right now you have to sell digitally, you don't know how. Okay? Then you got to learn that skill. But if you are selling an aspirational product, okay, you're selling a titanic kind of product, you want to ask yourself at this point of time, what can you do to make your customer feel that you are taking practical steps to be able to take care of their safety, to be able to make sure that you really care for them and they want to do business with you. So, you want to recognize that at this point of time, your customers are feeling fearful. Your customers are feeling nervous because things are changing so fast. 
and at the same time they are feeling very skeptical because suddenly overnight you see so many people on social media they are now digital marketing gurus so many of them and then suddenly you see so many people trying to sell you masks you don't even know whether it's the real mask or not right so people are now very skeptical so what you want to do is you want to show your customers that you are taking care of their safety you want to show your customers that you want you, you are here to give them confidence you are doing whatever it takes to give them confidence and most importantly you want your customers to know that you really care okay so this is the three things you as a business owner must do at this point of time does it make sense to you guys so far are you guys learning something so far if you guys are learning so far you love it so much you feel that there's a lot of value right share with me yeah how are you feeling right now okay yep good so guys remember this i know i'm speaking to around 77 of you okay some of you are in the business of selling a titanic product ask yourself what can you do to show your customers that you're practical next if you're already selling a practical product and if you're not selling well my question is do you know how to sell digitally do you have you already conquered what i call presentation selling because presentation selling is what i call a sales process that you can do online and offline okay i will talk about that later okay i'll give you an example one of my students in malaysia they are selling an aspirational product they are the best hot pot this is the chinese hot pot right so they are the most expensive hot pot in the entire malaysia and they are aspirational the reason why people go there is because they are branded right so think of them as the louis vuitton louis vuitton of hot pot now when this crisis came about what did they do they were doing whatever it takes to show on their social media that they are taking care of their customers they really care they give confidence you see body temperature you see sanitization work they keep sharing what are they doing to make sure the customer safety is well taken care you know before meal they give hand sanitizers they even have a dedicated server per table this is what they focus on okay to show that they truly care so even though they are a titanic product they want to show that in their titanic they have lifeboats so when you come okay you are not worried you feel safe you feel confident and you feel that this cast this business cares for you okay now remember this the storm is here but when the storm is here the pessimist complains about the wind the optimist expect it to change but the leader will always adjust the sales your role remember is to be what i call a strategic leader okay your role is to realize that the storm is here you have to constantly change if not you will be changed okay everyone please type on the chat change okay change you got to constantly get out of your comfort zone you got to do things that you have never done before okay but make sure you are doing it with the right people okay people who know what they are doing all right okay let's carry on now i will share with you guys some innovative business strategies and ideas that some of the businesses within my region have done during this crisis because i hope that you'll be able to learn something here and you're able to do it in your business in india as well okay now the first strategy is called related medical products and related medical products means you want to look into practical products like what the market needs right now example louis vuitton has started manufacturing face masks and sanitizers um this is a beer company in uk they have started doing uh, sanitizers what they have also done is they also did a uh, hand rubs okay in the shape of beer so this first strategy is called selling related medical products now the second strategy is called innovating around needs i will show you this case study in malaysia where this is a good friend of mine he sells bubble tea 300 outlets in malaysia and what he does right now is this he will get his staff to do facebook live 
to show you how to do bubble tea and then you can buy the bubble tea kit to do it yourself at home. Okay, so this is called innovating around needs. They look at what is the need in the market right now, they innovate their product to serve the need. I'll show you this case study in Thailand. In Thailand, this entrepreneur is in the perfume business. But what they did was they now created a new product. Why? Because now not many people are going out. They don't need perfumes. So what they did was they created a hand spray with 75% alcohol. You now you can see it here in strawberry. I think this is rose. Yeah, this is rose and this is peach. Okay. So now they innovate their needs. Okay. And then they started this product. Okay. Give you another case study, Movan Peak Hotel. They work with Bangkok Hospital, created a 14 days quarantine. Okay, for those people who have to be quarantined, but if you don't want to stay in the hospital, you can stay in the hotel. This is my student in Malaysia. They sell a local dessert in Malaysia. Okay, they have, they are one of the biggest in terms of uh, desserts, local desserts in Malaysia. So what did they do? Now that nobody can go to shopping malls, they created their own home kit as well. Okay, as you can see over here, this is their own home kit. Now, let me share with you. This entire product was created in my coaching program. Okay, I have this three days coaching program. And as you can see over here, uh, this is the founder Vaughn. He said, when I first attended Jonathan's training, my team had 11 ideas to work with. But when John created the three days masterclass, I brought seven of my top management to join. Okay, And after that, he created this program and he managed to complete around 10,000 ringgit of sales in four days. 10,000 ringgit of sales is equivalent to around 120,000 rupees. Yeah, 120,000 rupees around there. How many think that's pretty cool? If you think that's pretty cool, type that cool. Okay, type that on the chat, cool. Okay. Now, this is another student of mine. His name is called Captain Benz from Thailand. And what did he do? He managed to innovate as well. And he managed to hit 100,000 baht. Okay, 100,000 baht. And uh, what happened was he attended my training as well, used one of my tools called Profit Priority Matrix, created a tool, and then managed to sell okay, and make money. Um, I'll give you a case study, event management. Now, event management is one of the most challenging business. Do you guys agree with that? If you agree that event management is dead, type that, yes, dead, type that they're dead. Okay? If you agree that event management is dead, type that dead. Okay? Right, but for him, he's not dead. I know, you may be thinking, how is event management gonna survive? Okay, this founder of this event management company came for my training, and then we managed to create the virtual AGM. So if you know every public listed company, they have to do an annual general meeting every single year. So what did this company do is, they went to them, and then they started to create the virtual AGM. And this was the case study, right? I'd like to show you this case study of this gentleman who attended my training. His name is called Nicholas. And he said, I believe a lot of business owners out there are the ones who get worried and uncertain during this crisis. They keep thinking, when will MCO? MCO is actually the lockdown, right? When will the lockdown be over? When will business resume as usual? And to be honest, business will be unusual. After attended a course by Jonathan Quack, just three days, I have successfully pivoted my offline business to a business that realistically fulfill my clients' needs for now and the future. We have reinventing our business direction to serve our existing market and even new market. And after the class, Jonathan gave us a 10K challenge which allows us to use 10 days to make 10,000 ringgit. This is ringgit real money, which is around 2,005 US dollar. And after innovating our business, guess what? Only three days, we achieved our first 10K, right? So what did they do, right? They did the virtual AGM and this is their income from this one deal itself, okay? Um, 13,000 ringgit is equivalent to around uh, 3,005 US dollar. How many of you think that 3,005 US dollar in three days with their first deal is pretty cool? If you think this is cool, that they're cool. Okay, that they're cool. I'll give you another case study. This is another student of mine. Okay, eyewear, optical shop, 
right now, not many people going for optical shop. What can you do? <laughs> you can't even op open optical shop right now because you have to understand, right? Optical shop is a very different business compared to many other businesses. If you sell handphone, you can sell online. But if you understand the optical shop business, it is a product and service business. Okay, why I say so? Because the glasses is the product. Okay, the glasses is the product. As you can see, I'm wearing one, one right now. But before you buy the product, you always need to talk to the person in the shop whether this suits you or not. And then you want to test what is your power, right? What kind of power you need for your lenses. So this is the reason why I say this is a product and service business. Okay, so optical shop. Can they innovate? Can they make money? What do you think? Yes or no? Yes or no? Okay. Yep, yeah, they did it. Okay, let me share with you how they did it. They created the augmented reality website, right? So now you go to their website. It's the augmented reality. Just look at the camera. And what happened is they will show you how these glasses will look on your face. So they created this technology. And just yesterday, as I'm speaking to you guys today on 23rd of May, just yesterday, they were on newspaper in Malaysia because now they are on their way to become Malaysia's first fully online eyewear store. Okay. Now this entire, this entire technology, as you can see over here, this is Tai Hao and this is him. He's actually my student as well. And as he posted here as well, he said, as the list goes on, it wasn't a smooth journey. He posted this on 29th of April, okay, after attending my training. He said, being in the eyewear industry where our service is primarily delivered offline, 99% of transactions happens at physical store. The lockdown is disastrous. But when the lockdown happened, we came up with a few ideas with Jonathan Quack and our team from selling coronavirus protection kits to contact lenses from not knowing how to get sales online <laughs> to getting one to two transactions on cheap or no margin product to finally found our niche and delivery method is one hell of a journey. And as here today, 22,000 ringgit, which is around 6,000 US dollar, right? They managed to achieve 6,000 US dollar in 10 days. Okay. How many of you would want to make 6,000 US dollars in 10 days? Type there me, type there me, right? And then he said, uh, all the best. We are still working hard to get real good things coming out of the lockdown. Um, if there's any collaboration, any product bundling, come, please text me. All right? So guys, I will let you guys know that there is truly opportunities in this crisis. Once you're able to survive it, there are amazing opportunities. Right? And I really wish that if there's an opportunity, I'll be able to coach you to be able to guide you to do so. Okay? If you guys would like me to be able to coach you, to help you as well, type there, I want, I want, right? Type that I want, if you really want it, okay? Now, the next thing I'll show you, the third strategy is this. The third strategy is called giving back campaigns. So um, this is one of my students, mythology, you've probably seen them already. They work with uh, orphanages, they work with old folks home, they do give back campaigns. Um, this is my student just now, the dessert shop. They do give back campaigns. Um, this is one of my students as well in Malaysia. The master franchise ENW attends my training as well. And he also do give back campaigns. So he give uh, all these police officers, um, the people who are at the frontliner, give back. And then from there, they create marketing uh, message. They create a public relations PR news. Now, the fourth strategy is called cash flow first. Cash flow first is where you can do things like this. You sell vouchers, you just want to bring in the money first, right? Um, and then you give huge discounts, okay? Now, the fifth one is called news jacking. News jacking is you hijack a news in the marketplace and then you use it for yourself. This is uh, McDonald's who hijacked the news of social distancing. This is Tony Fernandez of Asia. He's famous because now everyone can fly, but he hijacked the news. Now nobody can fly. <laughs> All right. Now the sixth one, the sixth strategy is called spotting units. Now this is a tuk-tuk driver in Thailand. Tuk-tuk, if you know, this is what we call the tuk-tuk. Okay. And what happened was, if you guys know, Thailand is famous for their tourism industry. That's the main income. But right now when nobody can fly, the tourism business is down. 
what happened is these 30 gentlemen who owns these tuk-tuks came together and created a delivery company together called Tuk Tuk X. Okay, so spotting new needs means you want to look at what is the new needs in the market. If you have the new, if you have the talents, you have the resources, you have the assets, you want to go out there and be able to serve that market. Okay, so you use your current strength to serve a new market. That is called spotting new needs. I'll give you this case study. This is a cyber cafe in Malaysia. What did they do? Nobody can go to cyber cafe. They created a new product. They bring the cyber cafe to your house. Okay, so they do two weeks rental or a one month rental. This is one of my students. What do they do? Hangover prevention. So in Malaysia, if you drink, and after you drink, you have hangover, you know, most Malaysians will buy this drink, right? Because they want to avoid hangover. But right now, when most people are not going out to drink, what do they do? They created what we call a liver tonic. So the founder is my student, and he said this. He said, pivoting businesses has been the talk of town since day one of the lockdown. I find it very difficult as my business is still new. So I have to get my hands on anything I can, from videos to funnels to Facebook ads and anything. It had been a rough time. It forces me to put my current product on hold and start everything from square one. And he said, that was until I attended Jonathan's class on 28th to 30th of April. I asked him this question, right? And I'd like to ask you guys as well, right? Jonathan once asked me a question. If you are a pilot and a storm comes, will you fly through the storm or will you turn around to fly to another location? Okay, for him, obviously, you want to, you want to avoid the storm, fly to another location, pivot. So based on the pivot plan I've learned, I have chosen repurpose. So in my coaching program, I will share with you five types of strategies and then I will teach you how to decide which strategy to use. So he went for my coaching program and because of the 10K challenge, he rushed his team to create a whole new product related to immune system during the lockdown period. And on day nine, not only the product is out, right? Remember this, this is after the training, day nine. Not only the product is out, he managed to bring in 10,000 ringgit of sales, which is 25,000, eh, 2,005 US right? After pitching and closing the deal. Thank you to Owner Circle and Jonathan Quack for the guide and crisis innovation strategy masterclass. So this is his check that he received. As you can see, this is a transfer of money. 14,000 ringgit is around 4,000 US dollar, right? Now, how many of you, if, if really given a chance, um, you feel that I can possibly help you? How many of you would like to be coached by me? Just a question, okay? Because I, as you can see over here, I focus a lot on implementation rather than information. Okay, information you can go, get on YouTube, you can get on Facebook. But if there's an opportunity, how many of you would like the opportunity for us to work together? Okay, if you want it, type that me. Type on the chat, me. I'll show you another case study, okay? Another case study. This is home sharing operator. So this guy, as you can see here, he works with him. This gentleman here is the owner of AirAsia, okay? And he's his, he is his investor. This gentleman is known as the OYO of Malaysia, home sharing operator, right? So what happened was, he also attended my training. Okay. While most home sharing operators are dying, what happened to him is he made around 17,500 $17, US dollar in two days. Okay. What happened? At the start of the lockdown, they were the fastest growing home sharing operator in Malaysia. And they had the industry giant investing a significant portion to his company. But the lockdown has brought his investor down as well, which is Asia. So Asia is also dead. So being the smallest company in the group, they went from hibernation, didn't see a way out, okay? But they found a program by Owner Circle. On day one, they closed a 16,000 ringgit sanitization job around 4,000 US dollar. On day two, they already closed a 53,000 job, which is around 13,000 US dollar, right? And this was all done in two days. So on day three, right now, they are now going out there to make their first million ringgit. Um, she said that this is a very actionable program that you must attend with your key working team, right? He said you must attend this with your management team because these are all radical ideas and only when you go through it together, 
are you able to take action together? So time is money. Now more than ever, we need to work at light speed. So what did they do? They used whatever cleaners they have and then they went into a sanitization business and they built this new brand called Protect Plus. Okay, and that is how they managed to survive and right now they are seeing, seeing amazing opportunities in this crisis. So guys, if let's say you would like to be coached by me in my advanced training program, like what he said, right? Bring your team members along. If you have a chance, bring your key leaders along for that training. It will definitely help you to align the entire team to execute and to move very fast. Because at this point of time, right? If you move, the slower you move, the faster you die, okay? And all you need is one wrong move and you are confirmed dead, right? So what you want to do is you want to bring your teams along, make sure you guys know your right direction. Now, my question right now is this. I've, I've shared with you so many tools. My question is, what was your favorite strategy? Okay, I'm going to run a poll right now. I'd like to hear from you guys. What is your favorite strategy? Okay, please vote. What is your favorite strategy? Okay, so most of you have voted. Okay, let's look at the results. So we have 77 of you in the room. Let's look at the results. 76 right now. Okay, let's look at the results. So as you can see over here, majority of you decided that innovating around needs is number one, and number two is spotting new needs. Now, personally, this is my two favorite as well, right? I, in, in my coaching program, I focus a lot on innovating around needs and also spotting new needs. And then after that, I'll share on how do you leverage on different resources to make your implementation and execution as fast as possible and realizing that at this point of time, moving fast is very important, all right? Okay, so next thing I'd like to share with you guys is this. Are you guys learning something so far? If you are learning something so far, type there. If you're gaining a lot of value, type there value. Okay, if you're learning something so far and you're gaining, gaining a lot of value, type there value, all right? Okay, something very important that I wanna share with you is, one of the biggest mistakes I notice is, for many entrepreneurs, they see someone doing a new product, they copy. When someone doing Facebook Live, they copy. Someone doing app, they copy. Okay? Then after they create the product, they then think about their strategy. Okay? Then after that, they think about, well, now I have this new product, how do I go to market? What is my strategy? Who is my target market? And then what will happen then, after that, they will start to have a vision of what they can possibly do. Now, if this is what you have been doing, okay, please be very careful because this is the surest way to die. I firmly believe that in leading in a crisis, what you need to do is you want to recognize that business unusual is the new usual. So during this different period of time that we have right now, social distancing is going to be a norm. It's going to be a new norm. What you want to do is you want to ask yourself in this new norm, what is your vision? What is your mission, right? There is a need for you to even revise your vision and mission because environment has changed. And once you have the new vision and mission, then only you come up with the strategy and then only you come up with the product, okay? This is the right way to do so. Now, your strategy is your pivot plan, okay? What I'm sharing with you right now, all these are what I call the pivot plan. All the results that you have seen, all these are the product strategy, okay? Now, once you're able to pivot it right, then only you go out there and optimize your product and then you go out there and sell it crazy. Does it make any sense to you guys? 
Okay, if it makes sense to you guys, let that make sense. Okay, if this is a mistake they've been making, I hope that this will add tremendous value to you because you need to understand. Okay, you get, you got to get the right formula for you to make sure you can create results. Okay, now the biggest problem actually for most entrepreneurs right now is this. The biggest problem is change is happening on a monthly basis, weekly basis, and even daily basis. So what will happen is your vision, your mission, your plans, your customer needs, your government rules, all these are now a moving target. Okay. Now, if you recognize this, then you got to understand that right now, business plan no longer works. You no longer can create a business plan and hope that everything will go according to plan. What you need is what I call dynamic strategy. And dynamic strategy simply means this. Dynamic strategy simply means that you know that there's two things you need to do. You need to innovate, you need to execute. You need to keep on changing, you need to keep on taking action. And your job is to keep fine-tuning it. Recalibration is all about fine-tuning. You got to keep fine-tuning between creativity, innovation, and also execution, action. Right? That is what you need to do. And this is the reason why I firmly believe that at this point of time, even having a training like this is not enough. You need an ongoing coaching program. Okay, because what I'm going to share with you today might not even be relevant one month later. So the reason why I, I focus a lot on coaching because this is going to be an ongoing relationship and then we're going to continue to look at what's the changes in the market and then we will continue to change according to what is happening in the market and then we continue to take action and then we see that if things doesn't make sense, we change again and then when things make sense, then what do we do? We execute like crazy, right? So this is what you need to do right now. This is what I call dynamic strategy. Business plan no longer works. What you need is called dynamic strategy. And in my coaching program, I focus on giving you tools that will give you the dynamic strategy for your business. Okay? Now, in fact, in my, in my training, you realize that today you have learned that you need to pivot. But what you need, what you truly need next is what I call the pivot to profit plan. Okay? And the pivot to profit plan means this. Once you avoid the accident, you manage to move to the next lane, you want to accelerate like crazy. You want to make profits. You want to take massive action. But the biggest problem for most people, why they can never take massive action and make money is because this is the way they sell. The way they sell is they meet face to face. They have coffee, they have tea, they have drinks. And what do they do? They sell their relationship. They sell their personality. Okay, but today, in times of social distancing, what do you do? You can no longer do relationship selling. You need to do what I call presentation selling. Today, the people who can survive are those who have a sales process. They have a sales system that is working with or without them. And this is what you need to do. In my coaching program, I focus on this as well. I focus on how are you able to build a sales process so that everything can move digital, okay? So that you are able to sell while you are still sleeping, okay? That is your goal. Now, how do you increase sales during times of social distancing? You can do PT selling, you can sell vouchers, you can give massive discounts. But I will be honest with you, this is a very stupid way to do it, okay? You want to use vouchers to your advantage, not taking away too much profit margin. So what you need to do is you need to have what I call online to offline sales strategy. You need to have a profitable presentation system. And all these are the tools that I share in my coaching program that I'll be able to help you guys to do more. Now, guys, I, I know I've been talking a lot about my coaching program. I want you guys to know that because I only have one and a half hours today, there's so much I can give. And if you guys want all this, we need to go into a deeper relationship for me to help you. Right? Because even one of these tools, it will take me a couple of hours to help you to build your sales system. And once you're able to do that, you'll be able to generate cash flow during the lockdown. And you want to recognize that even in China right now, now that they have opened up, people are still not coming back. So you want to be able to generate cash during the lockdown and you are generate cash after the lockdown. I'll give you a case study. This is one of my students. They are one of the leader in terms of this meal in Malaysia, uh, it's called Xiao Long Pao. It's, it's a type of bun, a Chinese bun. And what happened is this, we created a strategy during the crisis in March. And right now, now that it's May, people are coming back, okay? 
we have this certain strategy that allows people to buy and then make sure people come back. This is what I mean by having an online to offline sales strategy. Okay? And then the customers are constantly coming back because we always give customers a reason to come back. Right? So guys, have you learned a lot during this training so far, right? On leading to crisis, leading in crisis. Have you learned a lot so far? If you have learned a lot so far, please type there a lot. Okay. If you have learned a lot so far, type that a lot. Okay, very good. Now, what I'd like to do is this. I've shared a lot with you guys, but because I only have an hour plus today, uh, what I'd like to share with you is you have seen my work, you have seen what I can do for you guys, right? We is, I know it's only one hour. Some of you are saying not so much because I only have one hour. Now, how many of you would like the opportunity for us to be able to work closer in future? Okay. How many of you would like the opportunity to, for us to work closer? If you like that, please type there yes. Very good. All right. Thank you so much. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to take the very last 10 minutes to share with you an opportunity of how we can possibly work together. Sounds good? All right. If it sounds good, you can raise your hand or you can type that good. All right. Okay. Very good. All right. So what I'm going to do is I will share with you a training program which I've created in Malaysia. I've created in um, Thailand. Right now, we are looking to do it in India as well. It's called the Crisis Innovation Strategy Masterclass. So this is a three days virtual training and this program has helped generated so much results for all these entrepreneurs. They are now not only surviving, they are taking advantage, they are taking opportunity to be the next market leader in their respective industry. In fact, in Malaysia and Singapore, this is known as the most result driven training program during the lockdown. And these are some of the companies who have attended my training. Some of them are international brands like e &W, right? like Subway. Their owners in Malaysia have attended my training. And this training has been conducted not only in Malaysia, Thailand, we are, we are conducting it in Indonesia next month as well. We are conducted in Singapore. Uh, and right now we are looking to conduct our first one in India. And I will share with you, personally, as you know, I run the business, I run the owner circle business, and I've achieved all this only during this period of time without spending a cent of Facebook ads, without organizing a Facebook Live for self-promotion. So won't you want to know our secrets as well? <laughs> won't you want to know our secrets? Even know our secrets like that, yes, right? How did we manage to expand and do well during crisis when most training companies are suffering? Okay, if you all know that, type yes. And I'll share with you during our training program. My promise is this. If you're able to come for my coaching program, you will start to see opportunities in crisis just like some of these Malaysian and Singaporean and Thai entrepreneurs as well so that we can do the same thing in India. Now, who is this for? If you happen to be in any one of these industry, retail, FMB, events, tourism, leisure, aviation, logistic and media, or hospitality, real estate, manufacturing, financial services, education, consultancy, or oil and gas. If you happen to be any one of them, guys, you need to come. You need my coaching program. You need this training. However, if you happen to be in any one of them, medical supply, food processing, healthcare, ICT, technology, e-commerce, or agriculture, you may want this because you may still want to come because you will be able to make more money by having access to this community, by having access to my coaching program, right? So this whole training program, this whole coaching program is really about preserve, pivot, and profit. I'm going to focus more in that because I will have a longer period of time with you guys over there. I'll share with you in terms of preserve, what are the things you must do to make sure that your business is leak proof, okay? Because many people, the more they sell, the faster they die. I want to let you know it all because of your legal, it's all because of your cash flow, your accounting. I will share with you what the 12 things to look at, right? To make sure you can make sure your cash flow is leak proof. I know some of you hate finances. That is the reason why you need my training. You need to know what are the 12 things you need to look at. Once you look at these 12 things, you know you can just move forward. You can pivot and then you can go out there and innovate your business. So in module two, you'll learn where to pivot. I'll give you a crystal clear game plan, right? Once you know where to pivot, then you want to know how do you pivot and then how do you stand out? How do you win in this market? Okay, how many of you want to be the next market leader of your industry? Type that me. 
Okay, if you want to be the next market leader of your industry, right, type that me. This part, the day two is about how do you decide which market to go into? And then how do you win in the market? And then once you decided, then we are going to module three where you will be able to walk away with a systemized online sales presentation system that's highly scalable. You will then design your own sales offer so that you can make sure that your customers will always come back again and again and again and again. You do not want to get your customer only once. You want to get your customers to come back again and again and again. And that is your goal. So on day two, right, on day two of the training, I'll be giving you this system. I'll show you how it works. I'll show you how companies do it in Malaysia, how you can do it in India. Companies have done it in Thailand and Singapore as well. These systems are successful, is replicable, and you can duplicate it in India as well. So I will be conducting my first ever virtual training in India, right, with you guys. And it will be conducted on the 13th to 14th June. It's a Saturday and Sunday. So don't tell me I have no time. It's a Saturday and Sunday, four hours a day. And the investment is around 17,000 rupees, right? Now, some of you may say, hey, John, why, why is, is, this, is this too much or is this too little? I don't really know what you think. But what I want you to know is every one of my students who have attended my training has made back this money many times over and over again. Okay, you have seen the results just now. Later, I'll show you some results as well, right? And then you decide on your own if this is what you want, right? Now, what will happen as well is this. I'm going to give you video trainings because what will happen is after you attend my two days training, you will get access to the recordings so that in case you forgot, you can continue to lock on back to that recording and then you can go through and rewatch the entire training again. Now, I will give you tools. I promise you that this will not be motivational. This will be tactical. This will be strategic. All these are the tools that you will be learning in my training program. And all these tools, if I were put to put together, the value is at least 86,000 rupees. Okay? Now, after that, you have access to what I call the 100K challenge. A 100K challenge is where after three days, we have a 10 days coaching program where every one of you must make a minimum of 100K rupees in your business based on the idea that you have created in the training itself. Okay, what is the value to this? Priceless. I can tell you it's totally priceless. Why? Because some of my students have far exceeded 100K rupee. Okay, give you an example. This guy from Cambodia, 11,000 US dollar in 21 days. This guy, wedding business, around 2,005 US dollar in 15 days. This lady, around 2,000 US dollar in two days, right? Book publisher, 100,000 baht in seven days. Okay, accounting firm, 100, 10K, 10,000 ringgit in 10 days. Veterinary, 10,000 ringgit in 10 days. Social enterprise, 10,000 ringgit in 10 days. Corporate training, right now, corporates have no budgets, but this guy managed to make around eight, around 10,000 ringgit in eight days. 2,005 US dollar, okay? Labels, packaging, and printing. This is around 4,005 US dollar in 10 days. Chinese restaurant, 23,000 ringgit, around 5,000 US dollar, right, in 10 days. All these are all done after the training, okay? Give you more example, the optical shop just now, you saw the 22,000 ringgit, which is around, um, which is around 5,005 US dollar, right? Did it in, five, in 10 days. A social enterprise, okay? Right now, most people think that not many people People are giving anymore. No, nobody is uh, doing charity. No, not really. They managed to make 50,000 ringgit in 10 days. That is equivalent to 12,500 US dollar in 10 days. And all these are sales, collected money. Card manufacturer, 100,000 sing dollar in 10 days. Video production, this is around 20,000 US dollar in two days. Okay, magic, 25,000 US dollar in nine days. All these are real money, guys. This is an English school. 300,000 ringgit in three days. How much is this in US dollar? Close to around 80,000 US dollar. Okay. Real estate developer, even a developer came for my training, make around 600,000 of sales in one deal in a matter of two days. Right? How many of you want to be able to sell more and bring in more money for your business during this lockdown? If this is what you truly want, type there, yes. Type there, yes. If this is what you truly want, type that yes. Okay, if you are bringing more money, you are bringing more sales for a business, 
you want to be able to help your business to grow further, bring in more money for your family, type on the chat, yes. Okay. Now, what will happen after the 10 days? What you want to do is you want to build more. You want to make more money. This lady, 10 days, 10K, which is a hundred, more than 100,000 rupees, right? But what happened was the next thing he told me was this. Guess what? The days to hit the, 10, the, the 10K ringgit, which is around 120,000 rupees, is getting shorter and shorter. And then show you another example. This is another student of mine in Thailand. Also shared this. The days to achieve it is getting shorter and shorter. Okay, this is what you want, isn't it? So if you really think about it, the investment in my program is what I call an investment because after that, you are going to make back. It's just a matter of how fast do you want to make back that money? Okay, and then that depends on how fast you can implement, how fast you can execute. Now, my focus is this. My focus is implementation over information. My focus is for you to execute on that innovative idea. And what's going to happen is after that two days program, we will have a support group as well. I can let you know that the support group is priceless because over here, being a part of my support group, you can read everyone's case study. You can see what everyone is doing. You can learn from those who have achieved their 10K challenge. I will invite some of our students to come and share as well, right? You will get to hear real businesses, real results, real stories. You'll learn how they did it so that you can be inspired with new ideas from other industries to do it in your business as well, okay? This is one of the biggest value, this support group. This is the group that after this crisis, they are not gonna be fried, they are not gonna be falling. They are the next tribe of the next generation market leaders. While others are fried and fall, this is the group that is gonna fly. If you wanna be a part of the group that's gonna fly in this crisis, type there, let's fly, okay? Type there, let's fly, if this is what you truly wanna be. Okay, so my question right now is this, what would be worth to you to be a part of this tribe? What will it be worth to you to be on the winning side? Think about it, okay? How much do you think this is worth, okay? So what is this all about? This is all about giving you the right tools. Through my coaching, I'll give you the right tools. Through my training, okay, I will give you access of what are the step-by-step -step process to do because right now you need tactics, you need strategies, and you can also be a part of a tribe of the next generation market leaders. So what happens is this, I want to make you guys a very special offer right now because if you really think about it, if I put everything together, okay, I put the training together, I put the tools, I put the support group, the, the 100K challenge, the total value is around 100,000 rupees. But what I'm going to do right now is this, okay, I want to get you guys to really take advantage of this. How many of you would like me to give you an amazing deal, a great offer? If you want an amazing deal. If you want a great offer, please type there, deal. Give me a deal. Okay, type that deal. If this is what you want, type that deal. Okay, and I'll give you guys an amazing deal. Now, amazing deal, I will give it to you guys is this. For today, those who sign up for the crisis innovation strategy, what will happen is this. You will get access to all of this for free. Okay, and because this is the first time I'm going to do it in India, for my first group of students, for the first 10, what I'm gonna do is right now, as I'm speaking to you, we have around 52 people, okay? For the first 10 who sign up, what I'm going to do is, rather than investing 17,000 rupees, you only invest around 7,500 rupees, which is around 100 US dollar. So I wanna let you know that 100 US dollar, what you're investing is half of whatever the Malaysians are investing, okay? Why? Because, this is the first time I'm doing it in India. So only for the first 10, I can give this offer, 7,500 rupees, right? Only the first 10 who sign up, talk to the team from Business X uh, India, you will be able to get this special offer, right? And tomorrow onwards, the price will go back to 17,000 rupees, right? So if you guys want to take advantage of this, right? This is a one-time off discount. Uh, enroll today. What the team will do is um, Business X team will post on the chat room, okay? They will post the link where you'll be able to enroll in this program, be a part of the two days live virtual training, get access to the private members for recorded training, get access to the tools, get access to weekly trainings, the private group mentoring and coaching, everything for only 7,500 rupees, right? But like what I mentioned, only for the first 10, you'll be able to access this amazing deal. So I hope that you love this superb deal, okay? 
So I've come to the end of my presentation, right? Uh, I'll be here to answer your questions. So if you've got any questions regarding the program, regarding this coaching program, please type on the chat, okay? And I'll be here to answer your questions, right? So I'm going to pass the stage back to you, Sonali. If you've got any questions that you heard from the group, okay? Feel free to ask me right now. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Thank you for such a wonderful session. And it was absolutely amazing listening to you and your insights. And I'm sure everyone present out there loved it. So, um, yeah, we'll get to the Q&As now. Uh, firstly, I would like to take the questions related to the masterclass itself. Because uh, since we're already talking about it, I've already put the link to register for the masterclass in the chat box. So to all the attendees, if you want to go and check it out, please uh, visit the link that I've uh, mentioned in the chat box. And now, uh, coming back to the Q&As, uh, the first question I would like to ask is, what if a person doesn't have a business yet, but they would still like to join? Is this a, a suitable program for them? If you don't have a business yet, and then you want to join, my suggestion is you need to know what kind of ideas you want to work on, right? So you want to know what kind of, what kind of industry you want to go in first. Because I want you to know that my program is not a motivational program. I'm not here to tell you, you should start a business. I'm here to tell you which business, what kind of strategies to do, step-by-step -step process on how are we going to achieve the goal, okay? So uh, that will be my advice for you guys. Uh, no, if you have no ideas, you need motivation. Uh, I'm not the right guy to you. I'm not a motivational speaker. I'm really a strategist. I'm a tactician, right? So if you have a step-by-step -step process of how to get things done, how to pivot, how to profit, yeah then I'm the right guy for you. Perfect. Uh, so the next question is, what type of businesses should join this program? I know you've covered it already, but would you like to add something else to it as well? Uh, any special businesses? Yeah. Well, um, some of the special businesses that I've been able to help, um, actually I've been able to help quite a lot of businesses, whether it's B2B or B2C. Um, based on my experience is at this point of time, as you can see over here, uh, who are the people that should attend this program? Um, mainly, the guys who are affected during this crisis. So, my, my question right now is this. Are you affected during this crisis? Do you think that sales will continue to go down? If you think that sales will continue to go down, then I highly encourage you to invest uh, a bit of money and then invest that weekend, right? You probably have no family time that weekend because you're going to have your time with me, and then we're going to help you to pivot and profit in this crisis. Perfect. Uh, so the next question is, will there be opportunities to network with Malaysian, Singaporean, or Thai entrepreneurs uh, during your program? Yeah, um, you won't have it on the two days, you won't have it on the weekend, but what I'm going to do is, my goal is I will create a global community. I will create a community where entrepreneurs of different regions can work together. Because like what Malaysians want from India is technology. We have a lot of things that you guys have that we don't have. Likewise, we have things that we have that you don't have. Like Malaysia, we are very blessed. Malaysia and Singapore is the country where we, where we are able to access to China. Okay, because we understand Chinese and we understand English. So as I can do, as I can do business with Indians, I also can do business with Chinese because I speak Chinese. So I'm, I'm actually creating a platform where we can leverage resources and network to be able to help each other. So from time to time, you may have certain resources that you need that you're, if you're not able to get it from the Indian entrepreneurs community, right? come to Owner Circle. Right? We have that network and resources. Uh, great. Uh, so Mr. Amit Mehta has asked, is the program suitable for a small retailer? Of course, um, I will show you this case study. Remember just now I was sharing with you guys, um, I, I said a Chinese restaurant. The Chinese restaurant is only one outlet, okay? Only one outlet managed to make money, managed to make around 23,000 ringgit in 10 days. So 23,000 ringgit, if I just change it to US dollar, I'm talking about around 6,000 US dollar, right? 5.5 thousand US dollar, yeah, around that, okay? I, I'm roughly right, okay? So only one outlet, they managed to do it. And, and if you're small, you definitely need this. Because if you are a small retailer, you don't have a lot of resources. What you want to do is you want to leverage on other people's resources. And my platform is more than just training and coaching. My platform is community. 
it's a tribe, it's a community of business owners who are there to support each other. Yeah, so definitely, it will definitely help you if you're a small retailer. Perfect. Um, so the next question, Mr. Bini Pradeep has asked, where can I find your coaching program? So once again, I have uh, mentioned the link below in the chat box. So please go through that link and I will also make sure that I send this link to all the attendees after the webinar is over. So just in case you missed it here, you can go and check it out there. And again, the prices, the discounted prices will be for the first 10 uh, payments that we have. And after that, after three, we'll get it back to the original price. Um, right. So uh, Mr. Vikas has asked, should someone wait for a better time for a new business idea or a new startup idea or is now the time to go with it? Um, should someone wait for a better time for a new startup, is it? Yeah. If you, if you are a new startup, this program is for you. If you already have an idea that you want to work on, this program is for you. But if you are not sure whether you want to go into business, then this is not for you. All right. So I hope I answered your question. So we have another question uh, that says, I'm an entrepreneur with interests in a couple of businesses which can be categorized as semi-luxury and hence they have been badly hit due to the pandemic. I'm working on a new business idea of importing essentials or non-perishable foods, etc. from North America. How can your program help, uh, help me achieve this? I need to know what kind of business you have. What is the idea all about? And then we need to study this idea. I, I don't tell you that I can help everyone and everyone will be safe. I, I, I'm not God. I need to really study your business first and then I'll be able to answer you. Um, but just to let you know, I have business owners from Bali, Indonesia, who are in semi-luxury business, came over, managed to pivot and managed to be profitable as well. So that is the closest case study I can think of. Great. So Mr. Satish Patel has asked, is this helpful for starting a new business? Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Perfect. Um, so I guess uh, we are out of time as well. We have already crossed the 90 minutes mark. And I really hope we were able to answer most of the questions. Um, Okay, so Mr. Praveen Kumar, just the last question he has asked, is it a two days live virtual program or a three days program as written on the screen? So just to clear out the right. question there. Okay, uh, Mr. Praveen, I'm sorry that on the screen is three days, but uh, we decided to make it two days. And the reason is because uh, rather than having three days of short trainings, we decided that it is very hard for business owners in India to take their Saturday, Sunday, and Monday off. So we decided to make the day longer and we divide it into two days instead. All right. So the actual program is supposed to be three days of around eight hours training. Now it's two days of eight hours training. So four hours, four hours. All right. But uh, Mr. Praveen, I want you to bear in mind that so far I have extended most of the time <laughs> because of usually question and answer. So when you set your time to come on two to six, okay, please do not expect it to be finished by six because sometimes because of questions and answer, I will have to extend. So please allocate your time until around maybe 7 p.m. to be safe for you guys. All right. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. So I guess we were able to answer most of the questions of all the attendees out there. And again, uh, guys, if you have any other questions, anything that you would like to know about the program, about uh, if you also want the recording of the previous session, please, please make sure that you get in touch with me and I'll be very happy to provide you with the same. And once again, the special discounted offer that Jonathan has given us is valid just for the first 10 uh, attendees. So please make sure you go and check out our link and yeah. Anything else you would like to say, Jonathan? Look forward to see you guys there. I want to use this opportunity to also thank all of you guys for being with us on a Saturday afternoon, uh, especially for a business owner. Your time is your biggest asset. I hope that you have your time 
being invested well. I hope that you have gained tremendous value from our program today. And I also want to take this opportunity to thank Business X. Um, thanks, Sonali. Thanks, the team from Business X who have given me your trust and who have worked together to bring this value to India. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Once again, thank you so much for a wonderful session. And thank you to all the attendees. I really hope we were able to add some value to your lives through this session. And we will continue to do so if you give us a chance. Thank you so much. And we'll see you next time on the 13th and 14th of June for the Crisis Innovation Strategy Masterclass. Please, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, before I go, uh, Kiran has asked, apart from strategies, will it help in sales and marketing? Absolutely. Okay. The reason why these people, these entrepreneurs are able to bring in the money is because of sales and marketing as well. Right. So you have strategies. You, you have two types of strategies, business strategy and marketing strategy and sales strategies. Right. So uh, Kiran, if you want to be able to increase your sales, come for this program. All right, cool. So thank you so much. Uh, been such a pleasure to serve every one of you. And thank you so much, Sonali, for organizing this. I look forward to see you guys on 13th and 14th of June. All right, see you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Thank you, everyone.